Besides GOP attempts to repeal Obamacare, another health care issue is also under consideration in Washington as we speak. And if Congress doesn't renew it by the end of the month, its future could be uncertain. I'm talking about CHIP. That stands for the Children's Health Insurance Program. Now, CHIP provides insurance to more than 8 million kids in the states who otherwise would likely go without it. That's because their parents couldn't afford it. Now, to give you an idea, to qualify, the parents earn up to 200% of the federal poverty rate, or 49 grand a year for a family of four. A recent op-ed in the Journal News describes the importance of the program the following way. Quote, being uninsured as a child is itself a social disease, limiting achievement of a child's full potential. Children with health coverage are more likely to receive well child care, be current with vaccinations, and miss less school due to illness, resulting in higher high school graduation rates. Insured children, they also use costly emergency rooms and hospital care far less than the uninsured, and they grow up to be healthier adults. Let's bring in our guest right now. We're joined by local pediatricians who help write that piece, Dr. Shell Shaw and Dr. Heather Brumberg. They're also officers in the New York State chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics and members of the Society for Pediat Pediatric Research Advocacy Committee. Thank you both. I appreciate the times. Now, not to date you here a little bit, but let me take you back to uh, when you guys were in medical school, I guess, 20 years ago in uh, New York and Boston, respectively. Talk about what those um, ERs look like and uh, what those children units look like before CHIP existed. Well, I think we have to remember 20 years ago, when before this program existed, the pediatric emergency rooms where we trained were a lot different. We had children who were coming in for reasons that were essentially avoidable. We had children who had worsening of their asthma be simply because they couldn't get their medications refilled. We had children coming in who had very simple, common problems that really could have been treated in their pediatrician's office. But the problem was, of course, that they didn't have a general pediatrician to turn to. Um, one of the big things we talk about is that in August, uh, right before school started, we'd suddenly have a lot of parents come to the emergency room, not with a specific complaint, but with the need for a school physical, because you needed that school physical before you could enroll your child into school. Now that changed once the Children's Health Insurance Program was enacted. Suddenly, we had a landscape where children who uh, earned up to 405% of the federal poverty level in New York could access a doctor, could have a general pediatrician, could have a usual source of care, could have that person who knows that family and that child and their health better than anyone other than the parents themselves. And doctor, it's when you go through this, and obviously you've forgotten more than I'll ever know, but it just seems so preventable here. I mean, New York alone, more than 600,000 kids um, that we're talking about that could be impacted by this. And while you make uh, too little to necessarily have it. You make too much. You fall in that donut here between Medicaid and being able to have health insurance. It just seems pennywise pound foolish where kids that don't get vaccinations, for example, because they can't afford it, they're going to get sick when they didn't need to. That's absolutely right. I mean, that's why CHIP is so important to help those families who really need that help to get well, you know, well child care and vaccinations, as you said, screening for hearing, vision, dental care for their children so that they can stay healthy and as you said earlier continue on for a healthy life and a successful life. I know a little bit about um, from the hospital's perspective and they when this whole debate's been going on as it relates to Obamacare the repeal the replace whatever else they said people forget what the ERs were like a lot of times. It wasn't people that just came in with broken bones or whatever else. It was the place of first and last resort for a lot of the population. And to a somewhat degree, that's what we're talking about right now, maybe not with the most acute cases, but again, um, there was an example, um, and, I, and I apologize, I forget which one of you ran into, which was, you had a child that was born, I believe, 17 weeks premature. I think you described it as weighed less than two cans of soda. And because of CHIP and because of how you were able to treat the child, when you saw the kid again when it was a three-year-old boy, it looked like any other three-year-old boy. But had that care not have been there, um, you see an accelerated decline for a kid that never would have been able to catch up. 
That's absolutely true. We're both neonatologists, so we specialize not just in pediatrics, but specifically in the care of premature babies. And when a baby is born that early, virtually every organ system is underdeveloped, including the lungs, the eyes, the gastrointestinal tract, and the brain and their development. So once their care in, in the hospital is complete, they are not done. They don't leave necessarily completely well. They require a whole host of lung specialists, eye specialists, developmental specialists, endocrinologists, all of whom work together with that family to make sure that that child does well and does wind up being that three-year-old who looks virtually indistinguishable from a three-year-old baby who was born at full term. CHIP makes that possible for parents who fall into that donut hole, those working parents who earn too much to be able to uh, be enrolled in the Medicaid program, but still not enough that if they had to cover their children and those costly premiums, they wouldn't be making decisions about food versus health insurance or shelter versus health insurance. And that's really the role of the program. And, and doctor, if you don't get to them quick, as I understand it, in those early stages, which are your specialties, not just the family, but all of us end up paying for it in the long run. These are the people who are going to have the more longer term care needs, and it's more expensive to deal with them as a child than it is as an adult, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I just want to add on to Dr. Uh, Shaw's uh, point that even backing it up, CHIP can cover pregnant women. And if pregnant women have better health, they have healthier deliveries. And there's several studies that have shown that there's less low birth weight with moms who have insurance because they're able to get their health and preventative care that they need. And if they have chronic diseases like diabetes, um, they get that under control. And so that means a healthier child from the start, too. And it's also dentist visits, as I understand, right. as well, for the basics. Exactly. But it results in, as I at least understand it, higher graduation rates, mm -hmm. healthier adults. And if people just look at it in black and white terms, in terms of tax dollars and how it's spent and return on investment, a lot cheaper to get them on the front end than the back end, right? That's With, right. Without a doubt. You know, there is a whole moral argument to this, which is that all of us want yep. children covered, and particularly children in our state covered. And when you add Medicaid and CHIP, we now have the lowest rate of childhood uninsurance than we've ever had. 98% of children in New York State have health insurance. The national average, because of the Affordable Care Act and other issues, is 95%. So we're doing better than the national average. And part of the reason for that is that children are the most cost-effective population to cover. Um, data from the Medicaid and CHIP program really shows that children are about half of the enrollees in the program, but they incur only 20% of the cost. And that's because the majority of children are healthy, and it's our job to make sure that they stay that way. And that's why the program focuses not just on inpatient care, um, but on all of the screening, the vision screening that allows us to intervene sooner. As neonatologists, all of our babies are at risk for hearing deficits, so they can get hearing screening and hearing aids if they need to, because if you don't have those hearing aids, then your speech is delayed. And now we're paying for more costly speech therapy and speech intervention it's got services. A cascading impact. Right, uh, at three and four that we could have prevented had we had that hearing aid at six months, eight months, Sometimes year. debates are tough and they're nuanced. For me, uh, this is inexplicable um, that this is even up for debate. We've done it for 20 years. It's worked by everybody's accounting yeah. here. We're talking about kids who, by every definition, didn't have a choice, you know, in their own life decisions here. And we're actually having this conversation. From what you understand, finally, are we optimistic that by the end of the month, Washington, I mean, taking this back, by the way, this isn't just a blue state, this impact red states too. This is apolitical, mm -hmm. the consequences for mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. Do you think at the end of the day they're gonna find the funding and do the right thing? I think I hope so. I mean, there are a couple of issues. I think you're absolutely right. This isn't a blue or red state issue. CHIP has been a very, very bipartisan supported program. Yep. Um, in fact, part of the CHIP legislation includes an independent evaluation of how the program is doing. And even that independent group has recommended reauthorizing the program fully and for another five years. Mm. The real issue is that this has to be done by September 30th. And if it's not done by September 30th, then children are going to start being kicked off insurance rolls, which is something we never want to see. We never want to interrupt 
a child's ability mm. to access care. Doctor, I'll let you have the final word on this. Are you optimistic or concerned that they're going to do the right thing by the end of the week? I'm optimistic. Everyone understands that it's important. Children are our future. They can't vote, but you know they are our future, and everyone wants a good, healthy future for us. So there's no way you can't go for it. Knock on wood. All right. Thank you both. I really appreciate the time, doctors. Coming up next, uh, we will pivot from health care to the courtroom. The corruption conviction of Dean Skelos has just been overturned today. He was the majority leader of the New York State Senate before forfeiting said seat. Same thing recently happened, you remember, to Shelley Silver, the once powerful speaker of the New York State Assembly. And all of that could, could be connected to the current corruption case out in New Jersey where we were at today. Senator Bob Menendez at the federal courthouse in Newark will have the latest from there as well. All that straight ahead.